Hello everyone, and welcome to the world premiere of Let's Make a Monster. In this series, I design and flesh out a monster for you to use in any creative setting you want. Whether you're planning a D&D adventure, writing a new story, designing a game, or are just a fan of cool creative concepts, Let's Make a Monster is here for your entertainment purposes, and for the low, low price of one like. Rather than me taking out a lot of time to discuss how the show is set up, I'm just going to get right into it, and you can figure it out from here. So, today's monster was inspired by me hearing a simple word for the first time in a while. The word, inkling. An inkling is a slight knowledge or suspicion, or a hint. Just a little single tiny idea. But an inkling also sounds like it could be the name for a squid or some other form of ink-spewing cephalopod. So, mixing these two meanings of the word together, what if we created a monster called an inkling as some form of psychic squid creature? Now, before I get too far into this, I want to point out that yes, Nintendo has beaten me to this somewhat with the inklings of Splatoon, but those, in my opinion, don't quite live up to their roots with anything to do with ideas or hints. Also, it is true that Nintendo has made some psychic squid Pokemon too, but the one we're making is intended for an entirely different setting, and will be differentiated enough to be its own unique concept. So the inkling that we're creating here is a purple levitating squid-like creature with one cyclopean eye on its face. I like that aspect because whenever you see a squid portrayed, it has the one eye look because they're directly on opposite sides of the face. I wanted to give the inkling head some psychic flair to it, so I put another eye mark on there with a little pattern around it to sort of resemble the eye of the Illuminati. We'll also give the inkling a few tentacles down below, which I think will mostly just hang there for aesthetic purposes. I decided to give it six rather than eight because I think it gives it a more balanced look. We'll also give it the two arms that squids have, except I think these should go underneath the tentacles because putting it on the outside may look a bit too goofy. Also, I want to say that before you correct me saying the long ones are the tentacles and the short ones are the arms, I literally have only found conflicting answers on which is which, so I call them what I want. On the ends of these tentacles we'll put some more eyes because I like the whole eye aesthetic and these will actually serve a function, which I think is a great point to move on to thinking about the lore of our monster. So the inkling that I designed is an intelligent monster that can live in either air or water and has many psychic abilities, including a sort of telekinesis that they use to levitate themselves and small objects. The inkling also has the power of telepathy, which having no mouth, they use exclusively to communicate. Actually, you'll notice the inkling also has no ears nor nose. This is because they receive all sensory input of their surrounding by basically hacking into the senses of people around them. If someone is talking to the inkling, it hears what the speaker is saying through the speaker's own ears. Now you may ask, if the inkling can tap into my mind, can it control it as well? And the answer is sort of. Inklings can cause small, subtle changes in a person's thoughts. For example, let's say you're trying to decide where to go for lunch, and you're really on the fence about two different options. As you're deciding which one to go to, the inkling may subtly insert a few positive thoughts about restaurant A, and maybe tweak a memory about restaurant B to make it seem less appealing. This doesn't outright control your mind, but can influence decisions to the inkling's advantage. Of course, the inkling has to be subtle about this, as this form of influence is extremely flimsy. For example, if you and a party of adventurers come across an inkling, and you find yourself thinking, it would be a great idea to stab all of my friends right now, you can pretty easily realize what's going on and ignore these little impulses. I think if you're going to use these as villains, you could have a group of Inklings living under a city and subtly influencing a populace to fulfill some kind of goal for them. Of course, if there's a group, there has to be a collective noun, and I think a conspiracy of Inklings is a pretty appropriate name. Now, I think Inklings are a little weak when you come face to face with them, so why don't we give them some last resort combat tactics? I think if they get the drop on you, they definitely have the ability to fully control your body by attaching both tentacles to your head and channeling pretty much all their psychic energy into you. While in this state, the inkling is basically in full possession of you, but cannot psychically interact with anything else, meaning it will only be able to hear from your ears and can't hear thoughts or move objects anymore. This state is a tad cumbersome because the inkling is just floating above there, but whatever you do, do not try and forcefully remove it, because it will take the head along with it. I honestly just came up with that when I only had the face drawn in this, but I like the idea of a sense of urgency in the encounter, where you need to either take out your friend or the inkling, and fast. I imagine the inkling doesn't quite like to use this one very much, so let's reach into the ink portion of its name and give it a sort of psychic ink cloud attack. When the inkling feels threatened, it can shoot out a cloud of what looks to an observer as some kind of ink-like gas billowing out of itself. Now this gas is made of pure psychic energy, so the cloudy shape is only how it is perceived by intelligent minds. Something like a camera, or maybe a golem if you're in a fantasy setting, wouldn't see any of it. 
Coming into contact with this ink can have a range of effects based on how you want to use it, but I imagine it either dazes or stupefies you, significantly lowers your intelligence, or maybe deals psychic damage of some kind. Whatever the case, I say our first monster has been made. Thank you all so much for tuning into my new show. Let me know if you like it, and leave suggestions if you have any fun ideas for monsters or ways to use this one. Oh, and that sudden urge to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share this video with someone else who might like this, I promise that's not a subtle hypnotic suggestion from a psychic squid. Honest. So go ahead and do everything I just said. Bye now!